Yo, 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 what is up, guys? Welcome back to The Product Designer. It is Jimmy, and today we're going to be doing a design study on buttons. So what are buttons? Buttons are these little things that sit on your product, which are designated for a certain tasks, and the user will push that button to indicate that that's what they want, obviously. So these little things can pretty much be shaped in a bunch of different ways, and the type of button that you use depending on the task that is used will be better than others. So let's take a look. This here is a camera and I think typically cameras use very standard basic buttons. These are buttons that aren't necessarily designed. Like you can just look at them and tell they're very engineering type buttons where it's simple. There's just a circle that sits in a hole and there's a switch at the bottom. I would probably not recommend using these type of buttons if you're trying to make a sleek, sexy design but if for some reason you you have to design something that sticks to this type of form language these are the type of buttons that you would use but I mean come on we're designers we're gonna be making these buttons look super sleek just take a look at this example here now look at these type of buttons these ones look super sexy they're minimal and they have that concave shape like what we talked about in the last video if you guys haven't seen that yet definitely check that out but for these ones that concave shape adds that drama and adds that really nice shadow onto your product just making it overall better looking and just those graphics on those buttons just look way sexier there's different type of buttons too it's not just this circular concave shape one but there's that button that's right in the middle now this is cool because it reads to me like those two buttons are probably the most important ones the one on the left and the right and then that one in the center it's more subtle it's flush to the surface and the reason why you do this is because it tells the user hey maybe this left and this right buttons are going to be the ones that you use the most and the center button you'll probably won't use it quite as much taking a look at these buttons they're really cool they're flush to the surface very much like that center button but then they bulge out just a little and the reason why they do that is because it allows the user to feel around without having to look where the buttons are and the use of the two different shapes also helps a lot with that and that bulge too also helps with the travel of the button giving it a just more satisfying feel during press because if you don't really have that clickiness or that travel within that button that won't be enough input to where that's telling the user hey you've press this button and it did exactly what you wanted it to do. A very interesting case of this is when Apple switched from their standard home button on the iPhone to the Touch ID button where there wasn't any travel. So what they did was they added a little motor. So when the person pressed it, it vibrated, giving the user the feedback. It really goes to show the care that Apple puts in their products. But of course, not every button needs travel. I mean, the ones that are on your smartphone, we touch it and we know that the input has been made just because we've already been looking at the screen. That's just the nature of how those touchscreen work. It kind of gives us that feedback right away. Sometimes it's when your phone is really laggy or something and you actually touch the button and nothing happens. It's kind of like, hey, did that even work? So if you're going to be designing buttons on a screen, you got to make sure you got some pretty good graphics design and make sure you got some pretty nice looking icons. So taking a look at the physical button of this remote, it's super cool. This is what I would say a designed button. So the button lives in this perimeter that is lit up. And this perimeter, I would say, is very significant. It's very crucial to making buttons work on products. It makes you think that, hey, there is this designated spot for something. What is it? It's for the button. And the designer took that idea even further by lighting up that perimeter, giving that button more significance. So if you have a button that is important to the product, maybe this is something that you would want to try. So these buttons right here on this headset is very cool. Each one has their own unique shape. But what makes it successful and doesn't make it so cluttered is that each one of them, again, has their own designated spot, their own little perimeter that they sit in. And this tells the user that each of these buttons have been placed there with intent and with purpose. And again, if you know that your user is going to be pressing these buttons without looking at them, so it's very good to make sure that these buttons are distinguishable through feeling and location. So we took a look at this example in the last video, but these buttons right here are slightly different in the sense that 
they don't have their own designated spot. But how this is still successful is that they made this whole surface, this whole internal perimeter surface here, dedicated for the buttons. So it works and it still looks good. So as I mentioned earlier with tactileness of the buttons and the button travel, if you know the user is going to be constantly pressing the buttons over and over and over again, you got to make the buttons pronounced. You guys can clearly see that with these this Xbox controller buttons. They're very nice and large and round and they poke out from the surface quite a bit just giving the buttons more travel. And when you guys take a look at the up down right left button right here, it has its own designated spot that concave shape that it sits in just making it all work. And those menu buttons that are in the center there, they're smaller than the larger ones because it's telling the user again that they're not going to be pressing them quite as often. I would like to see maybe those two buttons sit in their own little designated spot. They're kind of just look like they're floating there. So these button here are interesting. They're very cool looking. You see these a lot on like consumer electronics, specifically Bluetooth speakers, where it's kind of just a single rubbery button and you press down on them. They work, they look cool, but when you actually press them, they're not very satisfying to press. They feel pretty mushy, but you know, it works for this type of product, but you definitely don't want to be using these type of buttons for that controller that we just saw. So these buttons right here, they're very simple. They're flush to the surface, so they don't have too much travel when you press them. They actually go below the surface. It has a little indicator light that's right above, so it tells you immediately that you've pressed the button. It gives you that feedback, and you know, they look really cool. It doesn't break up the lines, the surfaces of this product. They're kind of just built within it, very seamless and very nice and very graphic. So these buttons right here are very similar to that last one where if they're flush to the surface and it doesn't break up any of the form. And the reason why I like this one is because the shape of the buttons follow the lines of the product. So this is definitely something that you guys can do too if you wanna create something a little more subtle and sleek. And this is definitely the opposite of subtle and sleek. Just bam, right in your face, super huge, super graphic. So just another thing, if you want to celebrate the buttons, this is another idea that you can do. And the last type of button that we're going to cover in this video, there are so many different type of buttons, guys. So, you know, you can constantly do research on these things. But here are these type of buttons, the concave buttons that are built within the form and there's actually no parting line in them. And the reason why you'll do something like this is because if so, if this is going to be like a waterproof product, you're not going to want water to be seeping into these cracks. These buttons are not going to feel very good again, but that's not the purpose. You know, the purpose is to keep the water out. And if you look at this example here, it's a very similar thing, but it's the opposite where the buttons actually poke outwards rather than inwards. So these buttons here probably feel a little bit better than the last ones. All right, guys, if you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also leave a comment down below if there's any other thing you'd like me to talk about and definitely share these videos with other industrial designers so that they can also learn. It also helped me out and, you know, just grow the channel because I can be able to create even more videos more often. All right, guys, don't forget to also hit that subscribe button so that my videos come right to you. And that's about it, guys. This is Jimmy, and I will catch you in the next video. Mwah. Peace.